they sacrificed for us. I've grown up around policing. My uncles were officers in New Jersey, and I am sworn in as a deputy sheriff myself. Police officers put their lives on the line every day to serve and protect their communities. Every name on this memorial represents an officer who died in the line of duty. Over 22,000 names. Tonight, we honor their service and remember their families they left behind. This year marks a full decade since I've had the privilege to be the honorary chairman of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund. It marks the 10th time to witness the Memorial Fund's candlelight vigil, a yearly tribute to the brave men and women who have given their life to keep our country safe. I offer my sincere condolences to those who've lost the loved ones. Please know that the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund will make certain that your loved one's sacrifice is not forgotten, and they will be remembered as some of our country's greatest heroes.
Police officers have always put their lives on the line to serve and protect their communities. To families and co-workers of the 394 names being read tonight, please know their dedication, bravery, and sacrifice will never be forgotten. We pay homage to their courage and their bravery. We remember their service and we seek to comfort and console the family and friends that they have left behind. I look up the panel, direction and what line. All these names here, you're hard to find. I kneel beside the flowers, the pictures homemade cards. The pain of your lost stinging in my heart. There's a trace across the letters. Spill out your name I swear I feel you here with me And I just came to say You're not forgotten I want you to know That your face fills my memory Your spirit fills my soul And this I do To honor May not get to see this wall too long. You're not forgotten. You're not forgotten. To perpetuate your memory, there's a stone that bears your name, and your spirit comes alive in. Come here to say you're not forgotten. You're not forgotten. The National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial is a place of honor and remembrance for families of the fallen, fellow officers, and visitors here in Washington, D.C. Our role here at the Memorial Fund is holistic. It's heavy. It's important. We are serving our fallen. We are educating the public, and we are keeping our officers safe. Our mission is to ensure that the memorial remains a constant place of honor and a permanent memorial in our nation's capital. I have friends that are on that wall, folks that I worked with over the years, officers who gave their lives doing a job they loved. Ensuring that the memorial, museum, and our officer safety and wellness programs are here in perpetuity is much too great a task for one group. All officers can help ensure that the memorial and museum are here for future generations. Our experience has been that many law enforcement officers, active and retired around the nation, want to have a more active role in what's happening at the memorial and in the museum. So we created the Ambassador Program as an opportunity to have better and richer contacts with the law enforcement community around the nation. Ambassadors are a voice in their communities for the memorial and the museum and our officer safety and wellness program. Our law enforcement ambassadors play a vital role and their support serves to bring awareness to the noble work being done at the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund. These current and prior municipal, city, county, state, federal, and military law enforcement officers represent the memorial at ceremonies, events, and funeral services nationally. They bring a much welcomed and uniquely localized perspective 
which allows them to exchange an ever-changing flow of information related to officer safety and wellness trends. Our ambassadors play an important role in ensuring that best practices in officer safety and wellness reach our men and women on duty throughout the country and sharing this valuable information through roll call trainings, presentations, and one-on-one -on -one interactions will help keep our officers safe and remind them to take care of themselves. And by having ambassadors in the field, it affords us the opportunity to be able to communicate with them in real time and also get information back from the field on emerging trends and concerns that they see so we can address programming appropriately. We are recruiting active and retired law enforcement officers from around the nation to further the vision of our mission through education and philanthropy and to help us carry out our mission here at the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund. Having these ambassadors is an invaluable tool during a time that law enforcement work has become increasingly more difficult, dangerous, and unpredictable. Simply put, these ambassadors are not only serving to respect, honor, and remember fallen officers, they're helping to keep the names off the memorial walls too. The first step to becoming an ambassador is filling out an application which can be found on our website. It's a very stringent process because we are looking for only the best of the best. Our goal is to have an ambassador as a liaison in every law enforcement agency across the United States. Our ambassadors ensure that the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial and National Law Enforcement Museum continues to be supported to provide a place of honor and a permanent memorial in our nation's capital for future generations. The job of law enforcement in a free society is a difficult one if we are to stay free. Our police officers choose to walk that line between those two essential values every day. And in doing so, they have earned our respect and our support. For the heroes, who gave their last full measure for the families who loved them, we will take what they have left us and what they have taught us and celebrate with gratitude their devotion to keeping us safe and free.
The National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund was established in 1984, a nonprofit and nonpartisan organization that honors fallen officers, tells the story of American law enforcement, and makes it safer for those who serve. Law enforcement professionals are the heart and soul of our organization. We operate under three pillars. The first pillar, is the memorial where we honor the fallen. Our second pillar is the museum where we tell the stories, the amazing stories of American law enforcement. And the third, officer safety and wellness, doing our part to keep names off the wall. The National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial honors officers who have died in the line of duty throughout the United States. Unlike any other memorial in Washington, D.C., this is a living memorial, meaning names are added each year to honor those who have fallen in the line of duty. Sadly, this year, we had to expand the wall to accommodate the growing number of law enforcement officers who have lost their lives in the line of duty. Our job here at the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial is to make sure this wall remains in place for your fallen brothers and sisters. We will never let their stories be forgotten. The National Law Enforcement Officers Museum expands and enriches the relationship between law enforcement and the community by sharing stories of service and sacrifice from across the nation. The museum provides innovative, insightful, and thought-provoking programs that are designed to spark dialogue and provide a greater understanding between law enforcement and the communities they serve. The National Law Enforcement Officers Museum is your museum. Our goal is to make sure when you step foot on our campus that you feel honored and respected. That when you come with your families, they are going to be so proud of the profession you have chosen. This museum exists for you. And there is one thing you will find when you get here without a doubt, and that is you are honored here. Our officer safety and wellness program recognizes best practices through our Destination Zero awards program. Our ultimate goal is zero line of duty deaths, but our focus is on improving officer safety and wellness, keeping names off the wall. We maintain a comprehensive database of creative, innovative, and successful programs. And we make this comprehensive database free to all law enforcement agencies from around the country. We also work with our federal partners to support critical programming in officer suicide prevention, traffic safety and crash reduction, and community policing to increase officer and citizen safety. As CEO of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund, it is my goal and the goal of our board of directors to make sure that we serve you in a way that you will feel honored and respected. My goal is to build your trust one step at a time. We need your support to grow together so that we can continue to honor law enforcement around the country. We want you to come visit the museum that was designed to honor you and share our story. Tell your organizations about what we are doing here in Washington to honor law enforcement. Because our story is your story, and this is your home. Law enforcement professionals are the heart and soul of our organization. The National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund exists for you.
your fellow officers and agencies. Ladies and gentlemen, before the candlelight vigil begins, we have a special musical prelude. Andy Delilo will perform a law enforcement rendition of the song, Hallelujah. Music by Leonard Cohen and words written by retired Ohio police officer, John Jaros. them with your graces we've done this now too many times a thin blue line avenges crime and into this would be a hallelujah 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 Sound of bagpipes fill the air. A rifle volley makes us aware. The bugler's song, but song of taps goes through you. 
A sea of blue is gathered round a casket laid upon the ground. The chaplain shouted out a hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, stand in pain and hope you did not die in vain. And to your oath you always stay true. You know that when you answered that call, you might just be the next to fall. Praying for courage, your heart beats hallelujah. 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 Survivor families now abound, beloved ones no longer around to do the things that other families do. They turn to those in that blue line who pledge to be their lifeline for that support they holler hallelujah 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 we promise them we won't forget so once it may be dry or wet we march salute and give the honors to you we read the names etched on the wall the fallen who have answered the call remembering them by singing hallelujah 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Board of Directors of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund and their distinguished guests.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Honorable Merrick Garland, Attorney General of the United States, the Honorable Alejandro Mayorkas, Secretary of the United States Department of Homeland Security, <laughs> Congressman John Rutherford, Managing Partner of the Ashcroft Law Firm and Board Chair of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund, Lori Sharp Day, and Chief Executive Officer of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund, Marsha Ferranto. Their names are Dustin DeMonte and Alex Hamsey, two beloved veteran officers serving with the Bristol, Connecticut Police Department. Both Alex and Dustin are described as true leaders exceptional and committed law enforcement officers who led with courage and integrity. Late on October 12th, 2022, officers Hamzy, Alec Ayarado, and Sergeant DeMonte responded to a 911 call reported as a domestic violence incident. The officers had no idea they were being lured into a deadly ambush. As they approached the home, a gunman was hiding in the bushes, armed with an AR-15, and opened fire on all three officers. The gunman fired more than 80 rounds before Officer Ayarado, injured with a bullet wound to his leg, fired a single fatal shot, taking the shooter down. Officer Alex Hamsey was fatally wounded at the scene. Officers Ayarado and DeMonte were rushed to a local hospital where Dustin DeMonte succumbed to his wounds. At the time, his wife Laura was pregnant with their third child. Sergeant DeMonte grew up in nearby Middletown, Connecticut. Just 35 years old, Dustin had already received multiple honors and awards for his work as a police officer. And in 2019, he was awarded Officer of the Year for saving a man's life. In his personal life, Dustin was adventurous and always on the go. He loved music and dancing. Dustin volunteered for the Special Olympics and helped raise money for the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. He leaves behind his parents, siblings, his wife, Laura, and their three children, Phoebe, Porter, and Penelope, who sadly, Dustin never got to meet. 34-year-old Alex Hamsey grew up in Bristol and proudly served and protected his hometown. He was a member of the SWAT team, the emergency response team, and was an advisor to the Explorer Cadet Program. Hey, I heard you're doing a good job in school, man. Keep up the good work, all right? According to his family, Alex had a need for speed and was passionate about physical fitness. Alex also volunteered his time to help raise money for multiple causes. A loving husband son, brother, and friend. Alex is described as a gentle soul with a larger-than-life personality and kind spirit who always put others first. Alex leaves behind his wife of just one year, Katie, his loving parents and sisters, family, and friends. Shocked by the violent attack on the beloved officers, the community of Bristol immediately showed their support for the families of Alex and Dustin. And tens of thousands arrived to pay their respect during a joint funeral service for the officers. 26-year-old Officer Ayarato, the sole survivor of the ambush, was honored with a Courage and Service Award and inducted into the National Law Enforcement Hall of Fame. Officer Alex Hamsey 
and Sergeant Dustin DeMonte were heroes, killed in the line of duty while serving and protecting the community they loved. Although they are gone, the sacrifice, courage, and bravery Alex and Dustin exhibited will never be forgotten. They now join the more than 23,000 other law enforcement heroes who have made the ultimate sacrifice with their names engraved on the walls of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial. Please welcome Marsha Ferranto, Chief Executive Officer of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund. Tonight, we have joining us here in the front row, Dustin DeMonte's family, including his wife, Laura, and their three children. Also joining us in the front row is Alex's family and his wife, Katie. These men are true heroes, and we promise your sacrifice, Laura and Katie, and theirs will never be forgotten. Dustin and Alex have special stories, as do all 556 law enforcement officers we are honoring here tonight. To pay them proper tribute, each of their names will be read as part of the ceremony and will forever be etched on the walls of the National Memorial and in the hearts of a grateful nation. To them and their families and to all law enforcement professionals who serve and protect us, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Memorial Fund's Board of Directors who have joined me here on the dais, it is my honor and privilege to welcome all of you to this milestone occasion, the 35th Annual Candlelight Vigil, to honor the service and sacrifice of Americans, law enforcement professionals, and their families. In addition to the more than 30,000 members of law enforcement, survivors, and citizen supporters who have gathered here tonight, we also welcome thousands from around the nation who are watching this solemn event on live webcast. I would like to express our sincere gratitude to our sponsoring, our presenting sponsor, Verizon platinum sponsor, the Motorola Solutions Foundation, and all the other sponsors and individuals who contributed to make this evening so memorable. Thank you for your generosity and your dedication to our nation's law enforcement officers and their family. When we dedicated the Law Enforcement National Monument 32 years ago, there were more than 12,500 names on its walls. As a special tribute to those men and women, we read each of their names in a final roll call of honor. It lasted 24 hours. Every year since, we have given that same honor to each name that has been added to this national treasure. We continue that proud tradition tonight with the reading of 556 names added this past April. These names are now officially dedicated on the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the presentation of colors by the City of Westland, Michigan Police Department's Honor Guard and the National Anthem performed by Officer Kenyatta Gaines 
with the Chicago Police Department. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming in the rocky track the bombs bursting in air gave proof the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet away or the land And the home of the brave. Please remain standing. As Reverend Markel Hutchins, CEO of Movement Forward, lead organizer of National Faith and Blue Weekend, and a member of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund Board of Directors, gives the invocation. Let us pray. Who we are, you made us. What we have, you gave us. What we know, you taught us. Where we are, you brought us. What I'm trying to say, God, is we come to this place from many locations, from north, south, east, west. We come from many ideologies and philosophies. We come from many religious and spiritual walks of life. But we all come to this place to be in one space, a space of healing and restoration, and reconciliation, and unity. Ordinarily, God, I would ask you to be with us tonight, but I recognize that you were already here when we arrived. Ordinarily, God, I would ask you to bless the families of the fallen, but I recognize tonight that you bless them as they travel from near and far, by plane, by train, by car, Ordinarily, God, I would ask you to inspire and heal and lift, but I recognize tonight that you've already done that. So rather than ask you to do those things, I'll say thank you for what you've already done. Thank you for blessing. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for healing. Rest on us tonight, God, that we might honor those who served, sacrificed, swore to protect, 
and ultimately laid down their life for their brothers and sisters. God, I pray that you would be with every family that's here tonight. Help them to understand that there's not only an organization that stands with them, but there is a nation that stands with them. Rest on their hearts tonight. There's so much we don't know and understand about this thing we call life. But this we do know. There's a power in this world that is greater than our own. We thank you tonight. Be with us. Be with every member of every family that's affected by loss. God, I pray that you would rest on us. If you do these things, we'll continue to give you thanks and praise. It's in your name that we pray. Let every heart say amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Lori Sharp Day, managing partner of the Ashcroft Law Firm and board chair of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund. Good evening. When I was younger and saw a police cruiser, my immediate response was to first check my uh, speedometer. Like many Americans, I was worried that I had done something wrong. As I got older and learned more about law enforcement and the sacrifices that you have to make, I, in my own awkward way, would wave when I saw a law enforcement officer in my only way of showing gratitude. Then, in 2001, I attended my first candlelight vigil. On that night, I came to better understand and appreciate the role of law enforcement and the dangers officers face each and every day. After that night, when I saw a cruiser, I still looked at my speedometer but I, and I gave my goofy wave, but instinctively began shooting up a quiet prayer for that officer's safety. As time went on, after candlelight vigils, uh, throughout the years, I've had the honor to meet more and more survivors, to hear the stories about your loss and your loved one. Um, <clears throat> and then I began praying for you. And I made an error, so I'm going to stop here and you may be seated. But the survivor stories have humbled us, and the only thing we can do tonight is lift you up to let you know that we care about you and to let you know how sorry we are for your losses. By gathering each year and grieving together this nation's loss, your loss, we lift up our candles, not only to honor the fallen heroes, but also to shine a light a light on the sacrifice of those who died protecting us to making sure that we were free and for the families they left behind. For those here tonight, that light will hopefully follow you home. It will reflect in you and in all of your communities. 
and hopefully it will also ripple throughout this country. That light will be a constant reminder that we cannot peacefully live our lives without law enforcement. We can't live freely without law enforcement's willingness to give their lives for us. As a former attorney general said on this stage, we know that the American people are only safe because our law enforcement officers face danger. We can only rest easy because they never rest. And we can only dwell in peace because they stand between us and the danger. I would add to that tonight. Without law enforcement, we would not truly be free. It's the primary reason federal, state, local, tribal, all of our law enforcement officers are the primary reason we are able to fully recognize our inalienable rights. Without safety and security in our homes and in our communities, Americans would not be able to truly enjoy the freedoms and liberties that are ensconced and guaranteed by the Constitution of the United States. And finally, for every survivor and let every law enforcement officer, you can be assured you have the never-ending support of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund and its board of directors who, as Marcia said, are on the stage tonight. On behalf of the board, I am proud to say that we are eternally a great we are eternally grateful for you. We are in awe of you, of your sacrifice and your service. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Alejandro Mayorkas, Secretary of the United States Department of Homeland Security. This is an evening when we set aside time to pay tribute to those who sacrificed their lives so that others could live safely and securely. It is a time when we also pay tribute to you, their families and loved ones who sacrificed so much too. When a law enforcement officer steps out of his or her home to serve the community, the family steps out with them. The officers we pay tribute to this evening, and you, their families and loved ones, are heroes. We honor the officers who sacrificed their lives through a moving commemoration like this evening's candlelight vigil. We honor them through the law enforcement work we continue to do each and every day. <clears throat> Let us draw strength from the pride we feel in the heroes we honor today. Pride in who they were and what they did. Pride in what they meant to us and what they will always mean to us. Let us speak of our pride in them everywhere we go and at every opportunity so that our country can, especially at this time, embrace and exalt the noble law enforcement profession of which they were and all of us are so very proud to be a part. Thank you. The National President of Concerns of Police Survivors, Patricia Carruth. I know there's a lot of brokenness here tonight, but you guys look beautiful to me. I would first like to extend a big hug and much love to all the moms attending this candlelight vigil tonight. For some of you, the anticipation of Mother's Day is exhausting I know that 
I know what that feels like. And trust me, you are in a very good place to experience Mother's Day this year. Because at the Washington Hilton tomorrow, there will be hugs galore. We've not only got your back, we absolutely get you. So here we are. You have attended the Law Enforcement United and the Police Unity Tour bike ride yesterday. Tonight, the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund Candlelight Vigil. Tomorrow, the Cops Conference. Monday, the memorial service by the FOP. Tuesday, the finish of the COPS conference. This is a full week of honor. With the closing of the COPS conference, it's an honorable but somewhat tough week. I remember sitting in those chairs 19 years ago. I was here to honor my very own son, Jeremy J. Carruth, and his best friend and co-worker, David Ezernak. They were both killed in the line of duty on February the 20th of 2003. They worked for the Alexandria, Louisiana Police Department and died serving a warrant with the special response team. It has been 20 years since my son was killed. His little girls, Noel and Margot, have grown up and have families of their own. Jay now has three grandsons, Maverick, Axel, and Laker Jay. Yeah, we have a basketball fan. <laughs> the last 20 years have been quite the journey, full of sadness and full of joy. There have been birthdays, graduations, holidays, weddings, baby showers, and the birth of many new members of our family. Through it all, I have been surrounded by some pretty amazing people, people who inspire me, people who have cried with me, people who have stood with me and with my family through it all people who get me, and they get it too, the grief element. Some of those people are on this stage tonight, but most of them are sitting out there with you, next to you. That's where I found them long ago, sitting to my left and to my right in the chairs like those chairs that you are sitting in right now. Many of them had experienced the great losses, just like me. Some of them had held my hand and just listened. They were encouraging, and they truly helped me get to a better place in my grief journey. They helped me find hope again, which led to my feeling joy again. Oh my, how could I feel joy again? How could I have hope again? My only son was gone. Well, I had to give myself permission to live life to the fullest. And I know that is what my son would want me to do. Those people that I'm talking about were mostly the people of the COPS organization. They were survivors. They are an amazing group of people who have taken my hand in my deepest grief and pulled me up to what life is today. And as a fifth grade little boy from Mississippi said yesterday at the LEU arrival, COPS has helped me be my best self, the best I could be. And Skip Stauffer, you are absolutely right. They have helped me be my best self too. COPS mission is rebuilding shattered lives, and they certainly do that one day at a time. Take your time for that. There is a COPS motto that I very much believe in. It has given me much hope for a better tomorrow and to know that I am not alone. 
I would like to include you all in sharing this motto. Please take the hand of the person next to you and repeat after me. Take my hand and I will pull you up. I leave you connected to each other. Please remember to always have hope and to be your best self. Thank you, I love you all. The National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial was dedicated 32 years ago. Every year since, the names of the fallen have been read aloud to honor their sacrifice. Tonight, we continue that proud tradition with the reading of 556 names that were added to the memorial in 2023. The names will be read by the Memorial Fund's Board of Directors and other special guests. They will be read in the order of the state in which they served. The candle lighting in honor of these and all of our nation's fallen law enforcement heroes will occur immediately following the reading of the names. Please refrain from lighting your candles until after the memorial candle is lit on stage and the flame is passed on to all of you. At this time, Merrick Garland, Attorney General of the United States, will begin this evening's Roll Call of Honor. From the state of Alabama, Michael Lynn Gillis, Bradley S.H. Johnson, Walter Raymond Hall, Christopher Michael Vaughn, Jamar Colin Abel, Michael Keith Morgan, Stephen Scott Bobbitt, Mickey J. Bowen. Continuing from the state of Alabama, Kevin Lynn Pounders, Stephen Ray Finley, Jeremiah Lynch, John T. Oaks, Marquis Dewan Mora, John Graham, Walter Lewis Johnson, Daryl Wayne Fortner. From the state of Alaska, Curtis Matthew Worland. From the state of Arizona, Jesus Dalaluz Lara III. Jeremy M. B. Wilkins. Philip James Vavernick Jr. Thomas Crawford Craig. Richard D. R. Lopez. From the state of Arkansas, Joshua Daniel Coldwell, Jeffrey Wayne Neal, Matthew Chandler Moore, Michael Ray Springer, James Roy Morgan, Paul Daniel Newell, Gary Lynn Bean. Continuing from the state of Arkansas, Ricky Allen Intimer, Gary Ray Kelly, James S. Payne, Jeremiah James Story, 
William, Joseph, Shibley, Donald, Mark, Scobie. From the state of California, Richard Allen Bianchi, Jr., Michael Domingo Paradas, Joseph Anthony Santana, Tyler Ryan Lenahan, Arthur Garcia Duran, Tamalama W. L. Scallon, Nicholas, Nicholas Joseph, Joseph Vela, Fernando Uriel Arroyos, Houston Ryan Tipping. Continuing from the state of California, Christopher M. Brax, Andrew Lee Myers, Anthony Nathan Bautista, Armando Fernandez Meneses, Pedro Romo, Jamie John Arakawa, Timothy David Tellis, Amber Joy Leist, John Mercer Black, Morgan Wyatt Honeycutt. Continuing from the state of California, Michael Edward Wall. Robert Morrison, Mono Jim, Stephen Michael Taylor, Isaiah A. Cordova, Jorge David Alvarado Jr., Donald Archibald Mason, Michael Matthew Scott Gibbs, Charles Morgan. From the state of Colorado, Dylan Michael Vakoff, James Miller Campbell, Robert Eugene Sandoval, Peter A. Walsh, Frank Sam Potestio, Andrew Stephen Peary, Marion Ernest Sanders. From the state of Connecticut, Alex A. Hamsey, Dustin William DeMonte, Diane Gonzalez, Joseph Paperni, William Kenny. From the state of Florida, Paul Matthew Patrick. Christopher E. J. Taylor, Adam James Webb, James Michael McWhorter, Jose Antonio Perez, Kyle Lee Patterson, James George Binnaker. Continuing from the state of Florida, Edward Luis Perez, Cesar Echeverry Jr., Ray Charles Hamilton, Shannon Mary Browning, Ramon Caban Jr.,
Continuing from the state of Florida, Clarence Guy Backerms, Michael Robert Hartwick, Christopher James Broadhead, Blaine Lee Lane, Kobe Brandon Seckinger, Christopher Nicholas Ferriolo. From the state of Georgia, Walter C. Bird, James Walter Johnson, Benjamin F. Wilder, Fred Foster Crawford, Jonathan Randall Koleski, Marshall Samuel Irving, Jr. Continue from the state of Georgia, Terry Randall Arnold, John Harold Lewis Astry, Michael Scott Howard, Shanika C. Napier, Addison Montanez Ford Sr., Patrick Darnell Dupree. Continuing from the state of Georgia, Talmadge Leon Tucker Jr. Scott Osborne Reiner, Sean Marcus Free, Donald Richard Crooms, Clifford David Barber, Samuel Bentley. Arnold. Continuing from the state of Georgia, Huey Anderson Keller, Henry Lee Nixon, William Gibson, Richard Lynn Tostenson, Walter Donald Jenkins, Jr. Jamie Lynn Reynolds. From the state of Idaho, Ellsworth Arthur Teed. From the state of Illinois, Kenneth John Thurman Sr. Brian Romel Shields. Joseph Anthony Tripoli. Jose M. Huerte. James R. Speck. Joseph Robert. Tinoco, Claude Earl Bowman. Continuing from the state of Illinois, Brian Joseph Norton, Nicholas Joseph Kozak, Nicholas Donald Wiest, John Venton Donaldson, David Lee Sember, Michael John Queenie. From the state of Indiana, Noah Cleon Rainey, John Medley Weissman, Noah Jacob Shanavez. William James Cox, Douglas Warren Sanford, 
Gary Lane Weinke, Sierra Brooke Burton. From the state of Iowa, John Lawrence Grampovnik, John Carl Williams, Austin Wayne Richardson, Henry Edward Graves, James Lawrence Kent, Michael Earl German. From the state of Kansas, David Leroy Ingle, Stacy Annette Murrow, Robert Price Kraft, Sydney Taylor Carter. From the state of Kentucky, Jody Wayne Cash, Gregory Lloyd Means, Oliver Junior Little, William Edward Petrie, Dixon Allen Sasser, David Michael Ragley. Continuing from the state of Kentucky, Logan Kendall Medlock, Travis Dean Hurley, James Jerry Critchlow, Jacob Russell Schaffens, Ralph Harlow Frashore, Mark Allen Pike. From the state of Louisiana, Walter Lee Swallow, Jr., Trey Stephen Copeland, William Earl Collins, Jr., Nicholas Wayne Tullier, Louis Harry Este. From the state of Maine, Harold C. Hillman. From the state of Maryland, Kenneth Charles Olander, Gregory John Begnarek, Glenn Raymond Hilliard. From the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Frederick Joseph Gibney, Edward M. Day, Lawrence J. Nagel, Joseph Francis Eberlein, William F. Ahern, Peter Neary, John J. Fitzgerald. Continuing from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Charles Alexander Christie, Jacob G. Easy, Tamar Anosh Bucci, Frederick Louis Forney, Loy Hu Ha. From the state of Michigan, Kevin Kelly Kokinas, Nicole Marie Schuffballant, Edgar A. Cranston, Freddie Lee Wilson. Continuing from the state of Michigan, Lloyd Michael Todd, Lauren Michael Quartz, Raymond Darnell Hughes, Khalil Jaquin Biddle.
Continuing from the state of Michigan, George Jason Kemp, Colin Brevik Bernie, Theodore Radlinski, George Arthur Ferris, Todd Lawrence Levey, Anthony Wayne Martin. Continuing from the state of Michigan, Franklin Pierce Boyce, Amos Forbes, James Allen Lear, Ernest M. Robinson, Joseph, excuse me, John Joseph Wojciechowski, Lee Eric Smith. From the state of Minnesota, Jamie Lee Williams, Joseph Uday. From the state of Mississippi, Stephen Michael Robin, Brandon Paul Estorf, Marzell Jerome Brooks, Maisha Brianna Stewart, Lee Dan Vance Jr., Robert Edward Moak Sr., Kenneth Winston Croom, Jeffrey Ray Turner, Johnny Raymond Patterson, From the state of Missouri, David Paul Jones, Lane Anthony Burns, Donald Eugene Reif Jr., Benjamin Lee Cooper, Jake Alexander Reed, Robert Boone Harris, Janelle L. Visser, John David Luck, Daniel Francisco Vasquez. From the state of Nebraska, Justin Lee Smith, Troy Todd Bailey, Jeffrey Lee Hermanson. From the state of Nevada, Trung Tan Tai, Justin Michael Terry, Edward Aaron Contreras Jr., Douglas Michael King, Philip Carl Clossy, Gerald Raymond Smith, Ray Edward East. From the state of New Hampshire, Frank John Dustin, Henry McAllister. From the state of New Jersey, William Hurley, Robert M. Miller, Matthew Adam Vogel, Frank W. Drews Jr., Harold Seaman, William Dietz. Continuing from the state of New Jersey, Julius H. Fro, Robert Joseph Cookson, Patrick McLaughlin, Joseph William Gortz, Joseph Charles Capriati. Continuing for the state of New Jersey, Robert F. McCormick, Daniel Richard Krupa, Brian Keith McAdams, Sr., 
Tolbert A. Furr, Matthew Scott Horton, David Fermenza, Frederick Gerald Maley. From the state of New Mexico, Lawrence George Corin, Fred Douglas Beers III, Michael Adam Levison, Charles Brian Fanata, Anacita Montoya, Ananias Green, Thomas Dean Vitaly, Robert Eric Duran. From the state of New York, Hector M. Nunez, Charles C. Vroom IV, Matthew A. Perlunger, Robert D. Negri Jr. Continuing from the state of New York, David A. Mathura, Leonard J. Swanson, Wilbert D. Mora, Jason Rivera, Daniel Sanchez, Barbara Burnett, Terrence P. Mulvey, Enrico Joseph Crisafi. Continuing from the state of New York, Lawrence J. Pren, Neil Eugene Porter, Michael John Rias, Hugh P. Bartlett, Jr., Christopher Michael Tully, George C. Moreno, Michael S. Fuller, Cornelius Joseph Douglas. Continuing from the state of New York, Stephen L. Rodriguez, Hector M. Gonzalez, Jr., Nicholas Perpero, Brian John Malley, Carl R. Ludwig, Mark Smith, Jennifer S. Abramowitz, Raphael Albert Laura. Continuing from the state of New York, Edward Gorjinski, Jr., Dennis John Howard, Gerald T. Brennan, Emmanuel Alonji, Lawrence Joseph Doherty, Jewel Jenkins, Thomas L. Neal, Emilio LaBoy. Continuing from the state of New York, Patrick G. Monroe, Michael A. Houlihan, Pedro Garcia, Robert P. Young, Matthew S. Vonsedowitz, James P. Bast, Frank Rosado, Vincent A. Di Marino. Continuing from the state of New York, Robert J. Reedy, Anthony L. Lombardo, John Minchilli, Dennis Patrick Murphy, Jeremiah J. Hunt, Raymond Harris, Thomas J. Fennessy, Andrea R. J. Rayner.
Continuing from the state of New York, Vincent, Kevin, Goff, Valerie, Kay, Jacobs, William, Soto, Carmen, M, Figueroa, Lawrence, Edward, Cabana, Paul, C, Adam, Thomas, J, Graham, Jr. Continuing from the state of New York, Ivan M. Morales, F. Brent Kamizik, Roderick Charles Covington, Joseph James Gallagher, Scott P. Enser, James Gerald Sweeney, Michael R. O'Donnell, Joseph J. Mecca, Jr., Wayne E. Bennett. Continuing from the state of New York, Christina Marie Zell, Melissa May France, Anthony Patrick Mazurkowitz, Frank Daniel Galdino. From the state of North Carolina, William J. Kearns, Ralph Chandler Kennerly, Oscar Giovanni Balanos Anavisca Jr., William C. Callahan, Gregory Thomas Horn Sr., Matthew Eric Dow, Michael Walter Godwin. Continuing from the state of North Carolina, Helen May Smith, James Brent Montgomery, John Sumter Horton, Ned Patrick Bird, Jose Angel De Leon, Matthew Ryan Fishman, Reginald Kamal Smith. From the state of Ohio, Kenneth Clarence Jones, Edward Lee Stewart, Dominic Mario Francis, Robert Craig Mills, Matthew Eugene Yates, Troy E. Sign, Clement Leroy Francis, Emerson A. Glottfelter. Continuing from the state of Ohio, Vinton E. Harris, Edward M. Hennessy, Lawrence Robert Graham, Sean Eric Vandenberg, John Dale Stayrup, Scott Russell Dolly, Herbert Minshew, Daniel Joseph King. From the state of Oklahoma, Christopher James Nelson, Bart Lane Arnold, William Daniel Kelly, Frank Rodriguez, Jr. Continuing from the state of Oklahoma, Robert Blaine Swartz, 
James Arley Hayes, Lewis Wayne Roller, William Riley Hargraves, Scott Brandon Owens, Richard Leslie Stevens. From the state of Oregon, Brian John Gaunt, John Zoller. From the state of Pennsylvania, Rhonda G. Jean Russell, Gary R. Tacconi, Kevin D. Redding, William David Lebo, Stephen R. I'm sorry, H. Armbruster, Charles G. Stippentich, Brandon Tyler Siska, Martin Francis Mack III. Continuing from the state of Pennsylvania, Deborah Simpson Rosario, Vladimir Nikolai Maliv, Aaron Lawrence Tokley, Conklin Snow, Charles Aloysius Prendergast, Vasco Snow, William Linder, John Batts. Continuing from the state of Pennsylvania, Timothy Earl Werner, Richard Charles Howe, Brian L. Rowland, Scott Michael Patton, Stephen Charles Plum Jr., Chad Michael Beatty, George B. Knapp, Joshua P. Mikan, Christopher M. Mortensen. From the state of Rhode Island, Gino Caputo. From the state of South Carolina, Roy Andrew Barr, Jr. Arthur Porcher Gaylord. Terrell Antoine Owens Riley, John Stewart, Austin Derek Aldridge, John William Berry III, Tommy Wayne Cudd. From the state of South Carolina, Braxton Michael Hoffman, David Hamilton Henry. From the state of Tennessee, Daniel Todd Wallace, Frank Keith Rezik Jr., Jeffrey Herndon Carson, Dale Leroy Wyman, Matthew Stephen Locke, Kevin J. Stolinski. Continuing from the state of Tennessee, Christopher Allen Jenkins. Terry Wayne Stowe, Matthew Walker Blancet, Bradley Allen Miller, Kirill Cortez Jones, Richard Lee Barnes. Continuing 
continuing from the state of Tennessee, Robert Frank Clayton, Cecil Earl Nunley, Bridget Lachelle Hunter, Harold Lee Russell II, Vince Arnold Mullins, Gregory Lynn Triplett. From the state of Texas, Mike Eladio Sanchez, Jr. Raquel Virginia Saunders. Michael David Dunn. Anthony Dupree Martin. George Frederick. James A. Gaines. Matthew Adam Jimenez. Ronald Rudy Butler, Stephen Robert Notham II. Continuing from the state of Texas, Joseph Francis Quillen Jr., W. B. Hardiman, Carlos David Ortiz, John Jefferson Allen, Chris Allen Bardwell, Jack Lee Guthrie Jr., Tracy Joe Dotson. Continuing from the state of Texas, Christopher Dwayne Gibson. John Paul Mestis, Lonnie Pulvinar Sneed, Barbara Ann Majors Fenley, Skyler Colfax Houston, Gerardo Morales, Julio Cesar Martinez, Robert Carlos Inclan, Burke Nicholas Hannibal. Continuing from the state of Texas, Brandon Paul Sy, Thomas Christopher Hutchinson, Charles Udell Galloway, Jr., Jennifer Lauren Chavez, Robert Adam Howard, Darren Elamendaras, Raymond Gutierrez, Jr. Manuel Felipe De La Rosa. Continuing from the state of Texas, Dustin Kyle Speckles, Sean Sebastian Rios, Elijah Pavito, La Quinton J. Wilson, Franklin Joe, Lauren Marie Redmond, Ricky Neal Roberts, Wayne Butch Noel Jr. Continuing from the state of Texas, Shelley Yvonne. Godbold, Manuel Christopher Widner, Robert Rivera, Ernest Frank Oldham, Jeffrey M. D. Richardson, J. Vincent Pena, David Glenn Evans, Neil Pat Adams.
continuing from the state of Texas, Ramiro Perez III, Billy Wayne Sheets, Caitlin Brianne Rittenor, Jade Nicole Drennan, Lonnie D. Johnson Jr., K. Weldon Zegger Jr., John Barron Broadway. Continuing from the state of Texas, Daryl Avery, Mark Allen Lockin, Taisha Roshan Harper, Kevin D. Dupree, Maria A. Garcia, Ruben Martinez Sr., Jerry Esparza, Anthony Carlos Salas. From the state of Utah, J. Adam Ashworth. From the state of Virginia, Michael Dwayne Chandler, John Elwood Painter, Charles Wayne Catrone, Caleb Daniel Ogilvie, Kenneth Paul Delano, John Joseph Donahue, Trey Marshall Sutton, David William Myers Jr., Jose Ramon Rivera, David Jonathan Nieves, John Gregory Blankenship. From the state of Washington, Thomas J. Ray, Jordan Taylor Jackson, Daniel Charles Rocha, Daryl Wayne Shuey, Dominique Bernardo Colata, Donald Lewis Sahota, Daryl Lynn Goodrich Jr. From the state of West Virginia, Max Lee Webb, Mitchell K. Robinson, John Agnew, Pete Pescator, Claude Thomas Spangler, George Mitchell, William Johnson Tabor, Berman H. Hatfield, Hannibal Noah Blankenship, Samuel Payne, Thomas Edward Baker III. From the state of Wisconsin, Daniel Lynn Craybaum. From the federal agencies, Yu Tak Tao, Raymond John Gutierrez, Charles M. Davis. Continuing from the federal agencies, Randall J. Harris, Jason T. Dumlau. Continuing from the federal agencies, Eugene Smith, Jason Dorian Nathan, Jason Lynn Norton, Brian Scott McElroy.
continuing from the federal agencies, Raul Humberto Gonzalez, Jr., Daniel Humbar Humberto Salazar, Michael Orlando Maceda, Jorge A. Arias, Cody Allen Olofsson, Bruce Robert Eckhoff, Brian Lee Vogel, Jeffrey Paliza De La Cruz, Kenneth McCollum. Continuing from the federal agencies, William Clark Hayes, David Eric Mize, Brian Wayne Turner, Rachel Elizabeth Vielmas. Continuing from the federal agencies, James Dale Holdman, Jr. Peter Christopher Egan. Sean Paul Hennessy. Continuing from the federal agencies, Jose Elizondo Gomez. Michael Judson Riley. Henry Schubert. Augustine McIntyre. From the Railroad Police, Judge W. Laprotte, Edward Patrick Savage. From the Tribal Agencies, William M. Williams, Sr. Adrian Lopez, Sr. Second reading from the state of Illinois, Brian Lee Sember. Behind every name here tonight, and on the walls of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial, are stories and memories that burn brightly, tonight and always. Stories that inspire us, and memories that cannot be extinguished. As a symbol of that eternal remembrance, Secretary Mayorkas and COPS National President Patricia Carruth will now light the memorial candle. The flame will then be passed to each of you with the help of the trustees of the Concerns of Police Survivors. As you are lighting your candles, United States Navy veteran and musician Dave Bray USA will sing his law enforcement tribute, Last Call. Down, man, down, I'm bleeding out. There's no time, no 
As guardians of public safety, law enforcement professionals are called upon to risk their lives every day for the safety and protection of others, and often to witness the unthinkable. Day or night, on duty or off, they never stop protecting others. Their heroism is unparalleled. 
and the debt of gratitude we owe them can never be fully paid. Many of those men and women are here with us tonight. We honor you today and every day. Our memorial, your memorial, pays tribute to the heroic spirit of those who made the ultimate sacrifice. Each year, with heavy hearts, we carve their names in marble so that their stories will never be forgotten. Behind every name engraved on the memorial wall are the officer's loved ones whose watch has not ended and whose grief sadly endures. Tonight, we come together in solidarity with and support of the surviving families and agencies of those heroes to respect, honor, and remember their loss. As we raise our candles skyward in silent tribute, but united by light, we pledge to always remember and cherish those who have fallen, those who have been left behind, and those who continue to serve. And let us always remember, it's not how these heroes died, but how they lived. This song is called Survivor. No one ever heard the shot that took your life away. And the only thing I wish is that I had the chance to say I loved you. One more time before you left this place Cause in the blink of an eye One moment in time you were gone No, I'll never look into your eyes again I'm left with only pictures Memories that we share together oh, They help to ease the pain Cause in the blink of an eye One moment in time You were gone You were gone But I tell story I scream out your name I'll always remember you because the thin blue line remains and no blink of an eye or a moment in time could ever erase you Ever erase you? No one ever heard the shot took your life away, made me the survivor that I am today. But I know now there's an angel guiding me along, and for the rest of my days. For the rest of my way, you'll be with me. You'll be with me. When I tell your story, I scream out your name. I'll always remember you because the thin blue line reads. No blink of an eye or a moment in time could ever erase you, ever erase you. No blink of an 
Took your life away And the only thing I wish Is that I had the chance to say I loved you One more time Before you left this place Ladies and gentlemen, First Sergeant Michael McCann of the Virginia State Police will now perform a bagpipe solo going home. Ladies and gentlemen, for your safety, please carefully extinguish your candles at this time, and please rise for the retreat of colors.
Ladies and gentlemen, before we conclude our ceremony, we'd like to acknowledge our featured singers and participants. Andy Delilo, opening performance of Alleluia. Color Guard, Westland, Michigan, Police Department Honor Guard. National Anthem, Officer Kenita Gaines, Chicago Police Department. Musical performance by the awesome David Bray, USA. Bagpiper, First Sergeant Michael McCann, Virginia State Police, Echo Taps. Lieutenant Ryan Wiggins and Officer Victor Nortega, Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. And lastly, I would like to recognize the incredible staff of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund and its executive leadership team. Bill Alexander, director of the memorial and responsible for tonight's candlelight vigil. Thomas Canavan, executive director of the museum. Mary Petto, chief marketing and corporations relations officer. And lastly, joining me here on the dais this evening, Troy Anderson, executive director of our officer safety and wellness. We thank you for coming. May God bless you. May God bless all of America's, America's police officers and their families. And may God bless the United States of America. Good night.